Hello and welcome to another episode of Nathan Builds Robots, your definitive source for 3D printer news. Today we're going to be talking about a bunch of new releases, there's a ton of stuff coming out from Creality as well as a number of other manufacturers including Anycubic, Frozen, Soval, and a list of other companies. There's just a ton of activity in the 3D printer market right now, so I just want to get you up to date on all the latest releases. Also I'll be telling you all about the upcoming RepRap festivals that happen all across the country, which is a great way to meet up with 3D printer people and we'll talk about some 3D printer fails and community updates. So, without further ado, let's get into the news. Today's coverage is brought to us by Munbyun, but I'll talk about them a little bit later. First, I want to get straight to our headline topic, and that's the Creality K2 and Multicolor Printer announcement. Creality has hinted that they're going to be coming out with something big in the coming days. Thanks to some sleuths over on r 3 dprinting on Reddit, we were able to see some nice screenshots of this printer. So let's take a close look here. As you can see here, this machine is called the Creality K2 Plus. And if you take a look down near the bottom, you can see the specs on the dimensions of this machine. It says it's a 350 millimeters cubed build volume, which is really large. And it looks like it's got a somewhat updated or refreshed tool head, as well as a filament purge bucket here at the back. Overall, everyone's been asking for a larger version of the X1C, and it looks like Creality's here to deliver that. Also, they have a multi-material parameters section, and if you look a little bit further down, you can see this user interface, which looks like it has multiple colors that are going to be fed into the machine. So this should be Creality's version of a multicolor printer. And Creality seemingly confirmed these rumors by releasing this image on Twitter. It says, a decade and beyond, do you dream in color? Your dreams are about to come true. Now, why is this even important? If you look at Bamboo Lab, who is kind of Creality's largest competitor, you can see their AMS unit, which they sell for $350, which is more expensive than a lot of companies sell entire 3D printers. And these are much cheaper to manufacture, but it gives people the ability to do multicolor 3D printing. And a lot of their marketing has focused on the ability of their printers to print with multiple colors. There have been other multicolor printing systems in the past, but this has been the one that really took it mainstream and made it accessible to the most people. All the other manufacturers have been trying to figure out how to create a multi-material system. I know for a fact that there's at least three other companies that are working on multicolor printers that are just about to come out, and we'll cover those in a little bit here. But yeah, this automatic material system that Bamboo Lab came out allowed the printer to switch between different colors really easily, and it allowed you to do multicolor prints, which a lot of people like. However, their near monopoly on multicolor 3D printing has allowed them to keep their prices really high. As more competitors enter the multicolor 3D printing space, we should start to see prices go down across the board, which should be good for everyone. So just this once, can all the Bamboo Lab fanboys and Creality fanboys get along and agree that this is a good thing for everyone? More competition, lower prices, and probably more features in the future as these two companies try to outdo each other. But let's be honest here, what's more likely to happen is we're going to have toxic fanboys from both sides of the aisle battling it out in the comments section so you know the drill grab your torches and pitchforks and meet me in the comments section down below but my question is now that Creality's released their large format core xy high speed multicolor 3d printer when are we going to see the same thing from bamboo lab bamboo lab has pretty famously only built up to a 256 by 256 build tray so we don't have massive machines out from Bamboo Lab yet, but hopefully this gets them to speed up their development and release something soon. Now, this is all exciting news, but let's remember to temper our expectations a little bit. Creality's last all-new system, the K1, had a new extruder, a new hot end, and all sorts of new design elements. It had a couple of issues, so we had to sit through a couple of revisions of the extruder and of the hot end until they got everything working properly. But one good thing they have going for them is they're probably leveraging a bunch of the technology they already developed for the K1, the K1 Max, and the K1C, and even the Ender 3 V3. So they've had a couple of iterations on this generation of hardware. Creality will also be announcing a larger version of their Ender 3 V3, the Ender 3 V3 plus or max it's going to be a 300 by 300 millimeter build plate so just a little bit larger and it should have the core xz construction that the ender 3 v3 had 
Now I also want to tell you about a bunch of exciting new printers. We've got even more high-speed Core XY printers with multicolor systems that have been announced and are soon to be launched. I mean, just check out this thing from Anycubic. Hmm, I wonder what that is. We've also seen some progress from Frozen, which is a company that's traditionally made resin 3D printers. They're coming out with their own version of a high-speed Core XY FDM multicolor 3D printer. I mean, that just seems to be the printer of the day in terms of feature set. Everyone's copying that Bamboo Lab X1C that came out about two years ago. Also, one last little bit that I wanted to tell you about the Frozen Arco. They're partnering with Slice Engineering to get nozzles sourced for them. So Slice Engineering is planning on providing some of their Gamma Master nozzles, which are wear resistant and super unsticky. So that helps when you're printing stickier filaments like PETG. And uh, the hardened nozzle that's wear resistant should also be able to handle carbon fiber. So we're getting a lot of capabilities out of these new printers. Frozen seems to be the run to the bunch out of these new high speed Core XY large format FDM multicolor 3D printers. It's a mere 300 by 300 millimeters. 350 by 350 is going to be kind of the target for the next generation of large format printers that Creality and Soval are trying to hit. And I assume when Bamboo Lab comes out with their version of a large format printer, it'll probably be around that 350 millimeter size point as well. Also, Soval is working on their own version of a high speed Core XY large format multicolor 3D printer. If you take a look at this, I mean, this looks pretty similar to the Voron 2.4. And as advertised here, it's saying it comes with a 350 by 350 build volume. So that's going to be a really big printer. I mean, all of these printers are going to outclass all of the previous flagship printers in terms of size. Like it used to be, we had the X1C and the K1 Max that were our big boy printers. I think one thing Soval is probably a little bit worried about right now is they're coming out with this product. But Creality is also launching their product that seems to have a pretty similar spec sheet. So you can understand why they might be a little concerned now. I guess Soval will have to compete either on build quality, features, or pricing. One thing I do like about the Soval design is since it's so similar to the Voron 2.4, it might have some cross compatibility with some existing mods that people have done for Voron 2.4s. I think this one will be just like building a Voron on easy mode, essentially. I have one thing to get to over here before I get to the remaining topics of the day, including 3D printer manufacturer fails, uh, a bunch of other new 3D printers that have been coming out, as well as the RepRap Festival scene and the upcoming events that you might want to attend in person. But first, a word from our sponsor, Munbyun. This is one of Munbyun's high-end thermal label makers, and it's basically essential if you're doing any type of e-commerce where you're shipping physical goods. Now, if you're used to regular 3D printers, you're probably not used to things being easy to set up, but this thing was up and running in a couple of minutes. I just had to connect it to my wireless network using the app, and then all of a sudden I can print all the things that I want to. They sent me the Munbyun 941 to try out, and I've been using it for my everyday printing purposes. I've been printing out like parking passes, tickets for events. I can print them out on this and it looks really professional. Also, you know, shipping labels is the obvious application here. And this printer is part of their 941 series, which has a high definition print head, which gives you really nice looking results. So we've got the 941 here, that's the base model. Then there's the 941B, which has Bluetooth. The one that they sent me is the 941 AP. I don't see it here on their website, but I think the AP stands for air print. So I was able to set this up on my laptop really easily. Now when I go to print something, I just hit control P uh, and I print it out and this thing fires up and it prints right away. All right, let's print. Munbyun also has their own OEM stickers that you can buy and use with their printers. This one is uh, kind of like a rainbow pearlescent sticker, so you can make some cooler looking stuff that's not just boring shipping labels like this. And having it be able to print over Wi-Fi is super convenient. I'm gonna take my script here, share and export, print, and yeah, it loads up on the Apple AirPlay system because, I mean, that's just how the Apple ecosystem works. Everything just kind of works together. And now I'm printing out my script. Even with a 
document that's designed for an A4 sized piece of paper, I can actually read this stuff just fine, which just goes to show you how good the resolution is on these little printers. Munbyan are somewhat of experts in this kind of label making area. So if you need support, you can always reach out to them and ask questions about like, hey, I need my labels to do this and last this long and all this other kind of stuff. They also have after sales support. So it's been really fun to use. I'll probably throw away my other label maker because this one is just superior in pretty much every way. And I could definitely recommend getting one of these to run your small business or whatever label making needs you have. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get back to the news. All right, now I wanna get into a section that I'm calling 3D printer manufacturer fails. And we have to start with the Bamboo Lab A1. So recently they had an issue with their heated bed cables. Some of them were like sparking and spitting out flames. Uh, clearly not a good situation to be in, and they basically had a recall of that product. They didn't call it a recall, but they told everyone to stop using them, and there was a risk of fire, and they need to replace and fix some parts on it. So, uh, and they stopped selling it. So it was kind of a big deal. But now it appears that they have a solution for that heated bed cable. You can see they've tested it, and they changed a couple of things on it, and they spent a lot of money on this marketing push to tell people that everything's okay now. Bamboo Lab chose to use a phoenix to represent this little fiasco. Something rising from the ashes of a, a fiery, burnt crisp. I'm not sure if that's really the message they want to be going for there. But as part of this recall and safety fix, they've also released never before seen footage of Bamboo Lab fanboys when they see a new Bamboo Lab printer hit the market. Oh wait, no, I'm sorry, this is uh, this is their test equipment that's showing what happens when they bend the cable back and forth. Looks like they're bending it back and forth at a rate of two or three times per second. Their claim of 12 million cycles to failure, that would take about a month and a half to test. So I'm not sure what their whole testing procedure involves, but it's interesting to see this kind of firsthand look as to what happens inside the Bamboo Lab testing facilities. But I want to run a little contest. I want to see who can come up with the best caption for this GIF. So if you have a good one, leave it in the comments section down below and I'll pin my favorite one. Another 3D printer manufacturer fail has been the AnchorMake V6 color engine. Now AnchorMake has released their own line of 3D printers and the V6 color engine was supposed to be their multicolor printing solution. I saw this thing working firsthand and I thought it was really cool. However, it seems like it didn't pan out the way that they wanted it to without future announcements as to what's going to happen with this brand or more printers coming out down the line. It's uh, looking like this brand might fade out into nothingness. Maybe they're mothballing it and they're not going to come out with any new printers. Also, we have some updates about the Elegoo Orange Storm. I covered that printer on my channel when I saw it in person. It's an absolutely massive machine. And it seems like the printer delivers what you would expect it to. It's a really big printer that lays down a lot of plastic and can make absolutely massive models. It's just, it has the downsides of a really large printer. I mean, you can't fit it through a doorway. It takes up a ton of space. It eats up a lot of filament. And uh, they've done some interesting stuff with the firmware, but it seems like it still needs a little bit more tuning before it's really ready for the mass market. And hopefully by the time they start shipping out customer units, they'll have it where it needs to be. Also, we have the FL Sun S1. This thing seems super impressive if you look at the spec sheet. It's got a lot of really unique elements. Uh, it's, they're using closed loop stepper motors, CPAP style turbo fan for part cooling, and they've got this super high performance hot end that they're saying can print over 100 cubic millimeters per second, which is faster than anything else that I've seen on the market that's readily available. What's the fail here? Well. I guess the fail is that it hasn't been delivered yet. We're gonna have to wait and see until we get more updates about this printer to find out if it's a design fail or if it's just a little bit of a scheduling fail. They're also coming out with the T1, which is going to be like a scaled back version of that S1. It's going to still be insanely fast, just you know, shaving off that last 10 to 20% of speed in order to get this thing to be a little bit easier to use and cheaper to manufacture. All right, on to some more 3D printer fails. We have Cheaty Tech. I actually really like their printers. They're very fast, very reliable. They have great print quality. I guess the only things that I don't like about them is they tend to be kind of chunky and they take up a lot of space on your desk and they're super heavy because they tend to use steel frames. So Cheaty sent this printer out to a couple of reviewers and uh, 
someone discovered a little bit of an issue with this thing. This chamber heater, if you poke something in there and touch the fins of the, I guess it's the radiator for that chamber heater, it's electrically hot, as in if you have this thing plugged into a 220 volt outlet, you can read 220 volts AC just by touching that little, uh, those little fins in there. The fin grates are not small enough to prevent your finger from getting in there. Generally speaking, you never want to have anything on a machine that's accessible by a human finger to be energized with 220 volts of electricity. It shouldn't be too hard to fix, but uh, it's something that I think needs to get addressed. Also in 3D printer manufacturer fails, we have the Pio Poly Magneto X. The initial fail was they went to East Coast Rep Rap Festival and brought the printer and it didn't work. Meanwhile, they were accepting pre-orders, but they were like, no, 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 guys, guys, it works, it works. Trust us, it works. Uh, it prints great. We'll make sure it's working at the next one. So the next event comes around, they pull the printer out, set it up on the table, and yet again, it doesn't work. So at this point, I'm like, man, are you guys like, are you just scamming people? I was getting a little concerned on whether the machine actually worked. They actually sent it out to a bunch of reviewers, myself not included, I wonder why. And they found out that it actually works. So good for P.O. Poly for developing a novel system like this. This is the type of stuff that I like to see in the 3D printing industry. Um, it might not be the most practical thing in the world. Do I think that this is actually going to be the next revolutionary technology that every 3D printer has to use? I don't really think so. I think it's probably a little too expensive. There's a lot of disadvantages to this sort of design, most notably cost. And also it's relatively heavy for the, uh, the motion stage. But it's cool to see this kind of thing and I think it makes sense for certain applications. It seems like reviewers are pretty happy with it. I guess the only complaint that a lot of them have is that the firmware isn't fully fleshed out yet. So the final topic of the day is going to be about RepRap festivals and in-person events for the 3D printing community. I really recommend people go to a RepRap festival. The first one I went to was the East Coast Rep Rap Festival. I've also been to the Midwest Rep Rap Festival. And soon I'll be going to the Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival. So those are the three main events that are in America in three different cities. There's also some other things like maker fairs and uh, comic cons and those kind of things where people will be showing off 3D printers and 3D printed goods. But the Rep Rap Festivals are all about 3D printing and custom stuff that it, you know, is one of a kind that people build in their garages or basements. And also you get to meet a lot of the content creators, a lot of the companies are there. And it's just really cool to see all this stuff in person that you normally only get to see online. Some people treat it like a garage sale and bring some printers to sell. So if you're looking for a printer, it might be worth swinging by and seeing if you can pick up a deal. Let me show you on the map where everything's located. Midwest Rep Rap Festival, which is held inside of a barn, essentially. There's no major airports nearby, so it's kind of hard to go to. If you're local to the area and you can drive easily, then it's not too bad of a drive. But generally speaking, I would recommend these other two in terms of being more accessible. The Midwest Rep Rap Festival happens like in late summer. So it gets hot and sweaty in that barn. I'm not sure if you're all ready for that. East Coast Rep Rap Festival that happens around October, like so like autumn time period. Um, I went to this one. It was a pretty easy drive. There's also some major airports in the area, so it's pretty accessible. It's kind of in a rural area, so you drive through a lot of farmland and stuff to get to it. You'd probably fly into uh, the Philadelphia airport or the Baltimore airport or maybe even the DC airport. You can make a whole vacation out of uh, attending this event. The first one that's serving the western half of the nation, I would consider to be the Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival. So this takes place in this town called Loveland, Colorado. It's just north of Denver. It's really easy to get here. You just fly into the Denver airport. Since it's a major hub airport, it's super easy and cheap to get flights in there. And then you just have to arrange some transportation to go north. There's some shuttles, there's some buses. You can hire an Uber or rent a car or maybe carpool with someone from the 3D printing community. So yeah, there's lots of ways to get there. And I really like that it's in Denver. April 20th is a great time to visit Denver if you uh, if you know what I mean. Also, it's right next to Rocky Mountain National Park, which should still be a little bit snowy this time of year. In addition to that, we also have the first European Rep Rep Festival. So last year, it was hosted in, I think it was Cambridge. That happens around December. And on top of that, there's two big industrial conventions. We have Rapid Plus TCT, which is an annual convention in the United States. Last year, it was in Chicago. I think before that, it was in Detroit, Michigan. And then this year, it's going to be in Los Angeles. 
I think it's going to be towards the end of June this year. And if you're local to the area, if you live in California or you want to fly in and see all these fancy 3D printers, I'd highly recommend it. It's really fun to see what's at the bleeding edge of the technology there. You get to see metal 3D printing, really large format 3D printers. Uh, printers that can print like hundreds of pounds per day, extruder driven printers, robotic arms, welding machines, and it, they've got all sorts of crazy stuff there. And if you have an engineering or manufacturing job, you might even be able to convince your boss to let you go and pay for the trip just to bring some of that knowledge into your workplace if you guys want to do some sort of 3D printing or something. And you can usually go for free if you can talk to a company and be like, hey, I'm interested in looking at this product. Can you invite me into the show? And then you can get in. So so that's a little pro tip if you want to avoid those entry fees. Also, there's the uh, largest show in the world. So this big convention center that kind of dominates the landscape of Frankfurt. That's where they host the uh, Form Next convention, which is about twice as big as Rapid TCT. It's absolutely massive. People from all over the world go there, including companies that you're more familiar with, like Creality and Prusa and Bamboo Lab. They were all there last year. There's plenty of hobby stuff to see, and there's plenty of like really big industrial stuff to see there as well. Last year, they had a concrete 3D printing crane inside of the convention center, so they've got a lot of capabilities to support large machines in that venue. Those are the main 3D printing events. I try to go to as many of them as possible just because I like to stay up to date on all the 3D printing stuff and it's nice to meet the companies and see the machines firsthand. Make sure to thank our sponsor Munbyun. I'll leave some links to their products in the description down below. I genuinely like this machine and I use it for my personal business use. So thanks again for watching this episode of Nathan Builds Robots where we are the definitive source for 3D printing news.